So, you want to make a squad map, and I'm going to help you make that happen. In the last episode, we covered how to make your terrain material and set up its material functions that we can change later, and just getting your general folder structure and level created. So, in this tutorial, we're going to cover how to import your landscape that we created in World Machine and the maps that we also got from World Machine. And we're also going to talk about foliage on your landscape material. So just getting started with importing your terrain, we're going to go to the Modes tab and navigate over to Landscape. And it's going to lag a lot when you first do this. It's not lagging for me right now for some reason, but generally when you click on this, it's going to lag. Oh, it's probably because I haven't checked the height map yet. So you're going to check Import from File, and you're going to navigate to your height map file, which for me is right here and once you've imported it it's going to start to lag like I mentioned there's no way around this that I've found so just to get it all done quickly if you used one of the resolutions that I recommended in the first part then there shouldn't be a whole lot of tweaking that you need to do pretty much all of this down here is going to get done automatically um, one thing that you might want to tweak is the scale of your terrain um, in this case I've generated a 4K height map, but I only want to make a 2K terrain. So I'm going to change the scale to 50 instead of 100. And that way when it imports, it'll already be at 50 scale, and it'll be exactly how I want it. And the reason I do that is because it gives me a bit more resolution to work with when I'm mapping. Um, also, I like to change the, the Z scale, the up and down scale, to 75 when I uh, scale my terrain down by half. 50, for some reason, doesn't quite get the correct scale. Uh, something with importing out of World Machine and into UE4, the heights don't quite line up. So 75 seems to be a good number. And finally, we're going to take our material and just drag it into our terrain. So that way, once we import it, it'll already be on our terrain. So we're just going to click Import, and it'll take a minute. And how long this takes might vary on your computer, but it doesn't usually take very long. And the editor might freeze up a little bit after you import it, but only for a moment. So now that we're in, we can paint on our terrain, but there's nothing there yet. It's completely black, and we don't want to paint it all by hand. So we're going to go over to the Paint tab, and we can see that we have our layers here, but we can't actually paint with these right now um, because we haven't created the layer info for them yet. Basically what the layer info is, is it's a little file for each layer that holds all the information that the layer needs um, to function correctly. So we're just going to create each of those by clicking this plus and clicking weight blended layer and it's already going to have a folder made up for us and a name so we're just going to click OK. And you do that for all your landscape layers. Once again clicking repeatedly is a theme here. And now that we have those made, um, before we go on to painting with our terrain and all that, I want to mention one thing about these landscape layers. Um, their layer info is pretty unimportant. You're not going to be touching this a whole lot. But the one thing that you need to do is you want to open each one. And when you open it, there's a couple things you can change. Specifically, the important one is the physical material. Um, this is pretty important because if you don't change this and then you go through and make the rest of your map, if you shoot the terrain in squad, um, nothing will happen. There will be no particle effect. The sound effect um, is probably going to be wrong. As well as it, when you step on it, it'll sound like dirt or gravel. It won't sound like what it's supposed to. So for instance, for this rock one, we would click the drop down and change it to rock, fizzmat underscore rock. And now, um, once we have this in game, anything that has the rock material on it, is going to have the correct particle effects and sound. So we would do that for all of our layers, but for the purposes of not wasting your time, I'm just going to do it for the rock layer that I can demonstrate later. So once we've generated all this stuff for our layers, we're ready to import with our maps from UE4. Um, the first thing we're going to do is fill the entire terrain with the rock layer. And this is just going to freeze it up for a second. But now our entire terrain is the rock layer. Um, you can't see it yet though because we have no light 
And to fix that, I'm just going to drag in two things from the Place tab. We go to Place, Lights, and we're going to drag in a directional light, which allows us to see our terrain, and a skylight, which isn't going to do anything quite yet, but it'll be important later. So now we can see our terrain, and it looks really cool. However, everything is rock. So we're going to use the height maps that we generated from UE4, the splat maps, sorry, and we're going to apply layers to our terrain with them. So first things first, we had a grass map. So we're going to import from file onto our grass map by right clicking. And we're going to choose our grass map that we created earlier. And once again, it's going to freeze up for a moment. But once it unfreezes, we will see that our grass has been correctly applied to our terrain, like so. And we have all this nice grass. And it even generates um, grass foliage on it because that's how this landscape uh, material works, which is great. And we're going to talk about editing that in just a bit. And we also have the flow map. Great time for an autosave, UE4, really loving it. Um, the flow map is going to be applied in the same way once it decides to stop autosaving. And we're going to use the dirt layer for this. So we're going to import from file and choose the flow map. Once again, it's going to freeze for a moment, but not too long. And now that we've done that, you can see that our flow map has been covered in dirt. And it looks quite nice, if I do say, them, say so myself. Now, I'm just going to really quickly adjust the direction of the light, so that way we can see our terrain a bit better. And it's a bit lighter. Yeah, so our height map is working great, and so are our flat maps. So we notice that there's this grass being generated on the grass layer of our terrain. Um, let's say that, that it looks a bit too sparse for us. It's just, it, we're not feeling it. We don't like the flowers. So if you want to change what foliage is being generated on which part of the terrain, we can change that. So going back into our map folder, we open up our landscape material, and we dealt with this last round, uh, last episode as well. However, we only dealt with these parts. We kind of pushed this guy off to the wayside. And what this does is this handles all of the foliage generation on the different landscape layers. Basically, each of these nodes is sampling one of these layers, and then this node is putting the foliage on that layer. Um, so for instance, we have grass here. There is a, or a grass type in the Arharivka called grass, and it's putting it on the grass layer. And it's also called grass. There's a lot of grass there. Um, and to demonstrate this a bit more clearly, this is putting it on a layer called forest. It's putting the foliage type called forest, but for some reason this bit is called leaves. So whatever Whatever these bits are named doesn't matter. All that matters is the sampling and the grass type. So let's say we want to change this grass. This is too sparse for us. So the first thing we're going to do is make a copy of it. Because if we change the one in Yurikova, just like I explained earlier, if you were to send your map to somebody else, their Yurikova would have the original still in it, and it just wouldn't look right for them. So we go into Yurikova. There's a folder here called Landscape Grass Types. So we're going to open that up, and we need a folder in our map as well to put our, our grass types in. So we're going to make a folder called Landscape Grass Types. And in here we have the grass, uh, grass type, so we're just going to drag that over and copy it. And now that we have one made up for our own, we're going to go back into our material, and we're going to change the type of grass that's on this layer to our grass. So search for your folder, and you'll find it. And now that we've changed that, we can click Apply and save our material. Now it's going to compile shaders quickly, and it'll also build our landscape grass maps. And as you can see, we still have foliage there. 
but it's the same foliage that there was before because we haven't changed our grass type yet. So let's do that. We open up our grass type, and it's all pretty simple here. Let me just collapse all of these. You have different uh, kind of categories here, and each category is one type of model, and it has uh, different variables that affect its placement, such as its density and whether it uses a grid, so you can have it be a bit more un, you know, irregular. Uh, it has its its call distance, which is very important, and some scaling stuff, random rotation. Um, aligned to surface is also very important because if you have grass that isn't aligned to the surface, it'll all be you know pointing straight up and it won't align well on hills. So make sure you have that checked. Now, let's say we don't want the flowers, which I believe are down here. That's just literally nothing, so let's just delete that. Um, now we have the flowers. There's two flowers here. So we're just going to delete these, and it's just as easy as clicking the arrow, deleting them, and it'll build our grass maps, and there's no more flowers. And that works for pretty much anything in here. If you want to get rid of it, just delete it. If you want to change it, you can just change it, and it'll instantly build stuff, and it'll be updated in the game. Now, I, I don't mind the rocks, but let's say we want to change the density of this grass. Currently, it's at 20. And if we look, I feel like that's a little bit sparse for the side of a hill. So let's let's change it to 50. And it doesn't even need to rebuild our grass map for this. But now you can see it's a lot more dense. There's a lot more grass there. And I think that looks good. But, you know, let's say I want to go crazy. I want to make this a really performance-intensive map. But it's going to look cool. So I want to change how far away the grass uh, stops drawing. And that's easy as well. We just change the call distance. Now there's two values here. And normally, if you were using a certain grass material that had a transparency thingy in it, you could change the start and end call distance, and the grass would fade out. But I don't think Squad uses that. So you're just going to want to set these to the same. Uh, they're currently at 10,000. Let's change them to 25,000. And now we can see that we have grass drawing much farther up than we did before. Now, this comes at a cost. The farther away your foliage is drawing, especially small, dense items like grass, the less your map performance will be. And you really want to be careful with this. Um, drawing foliage and lighting are the two most performance-intensive parts of your map. So if there's any ways that you can optimize those two bits, then use it, because there's very little overhead from other things, such as models and terrain and such. The biggest things are going to be foliage and lighting. So let's just set that back to 20, just in case. Now, that's the foliage types, but what if we wanted to add a new foliage type to a layer that doesn't have one already? So let's say this dirt. Oh wait, it has one already. So. Let's find a foliage type that doesn't. So in here, the layers that have it are grass, forest, dead grass, and dirt. So let's say we want to change soils grass type. It doesn't already have one. So we have a bunch of soil. And once it compiles through, yeah, there's nothing on here. So we want to have some rocks. Conveniently enough, there's already a grass type in here that just has some rocks on it. And if you wanted to make a brand new grass type with, you know, crazy custom things in it, all you got to do is right click, and I believe it's under miscellaneous, and you can use landscape grass type. And when you create a new one, you can just add the uh, elements and change all their settings. But in this case, I'm just going to copy the one from dirt because it's already there and it's already nice. So. There's lots of stuff in the Squad SDK that you can use like that. So we have the dirt thing here, but in our material, there's no input for dirt. So all we have to do to change that is just copy one of these, Control C, Control V, and change the landscape layer to the one that you want the foliage to be on, in this case, dirt. Oh, sorry, soil. 
So now that we have one for soil, we're already calling the soil landscape layer. Now we just need to add a slot for it in here. So in this case, we're just going to add an element. And it's at the bottom, so I'm just going to move that down. And we're going to call the element soil. Although the name really doesn't matter, we could call it whatever we want. And we're going to search for our landscape grass type. And we just connect them in like this. And it's as easy as that. It'll compile shaders, and when it's done with that, we should see that our grass type is rendering on the correct layer. And that's pretty much all you need to know about editing uh, your landscape grass types and setting up your terrain. In the next part, we're going to cover editing your terrain layers. And we're also going to cover a little bit on terrain holes. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.